Hey guys, this is Mr. C, and today we're going to be talking about domain and range of functions and relations. So, um, as far as domain and range goes, I've got my first slide up here, and I put my slides on this piece of paper, these papers. The domain are all of the x values that the relation takes on, and the range is all the y values that the relation takes on. All right, and so what does that mean? So, as we go through these examples, I'm going to explain what that means for a relation to have a domain and a range and what exactly those two things are. So, um, first of all, you've got a couple things on domain and range too that you might already know. The domain are all of the X values for the independent variable. And so you probably heard that in other classes like science, that your independent variable is the input and the range is the output. And so that's another way to think about domain and range. And then some relations and functions, it's no problem. It's all real numbers. Other ones are not as fortunate. Um, you have to look at it and take values out or, uh, or see if there's a span of values that maybe won't work. So let's take a look at some examples. Our first one is going to be this little graph right here. And we see the single point right there. And so we want to just put the domain and range down for that single point. And so the domain are all of the x values that this relation, which that's what it is, um, has. Well, it's only a single point. So its only x value is negative 2. Okay, so as if that's a uh, ordered pair, then the ordered pair for that point would be negative 2, comma, and then 2, right? So the domain would be that x value, and it's only 1. So you would just maybe put down x equals negative 2. Is one way to do it and the range would be the y value and that's just positive 2 so y equals positive 2. Uh, some teachers will have you put these into set builder notation interval notation a bunch of different notations uh, i'm going to just keep it kind of simple for this one and then in uh, later videos in algebra 2 you'll see how to write these in the other uh, types of notation like set builder or uh, interval notation so Moving on, let's take a look at our next one. And so this time we have this, looks like a line segment. And so now uh, we have more than one point on this relation because uh, there's all kinds of them in here. And so we need to list all of them. And there's really no way to list them all individually because a line segment contains an infinite number of points. So here's what we do. For the domain, those are the X values. So where does this start? Well, it looks like it starts right there at negative one. And if you look all the way through here, all of these X values are being represented by points on this line segment until it stops. And it stops right there at one, two, three for X, right? And so it's gonna go from negative one to three, okay? You do have closed circles at the ends. So how do you write that? Well, negative one less than equal to x less than or equal to and then the last one would be three and so we read a graph from left to right just like we read sentences from left to right now let's look at the range the range of the y values so we go here and we see the first y value is going to be at one right there it's going to keep going up until it gets to right there and that's one two three four five so from one to five for the y values, okay? So one less than or equal to y less than or equal to five. And that's your domain and range. You know, I just wrote them as inequalities and that's fine for now. All right, so here's another one. And here we have another line segment. And so this time it's going to, for the domain, it starts at zero for x because that's where the origin is. And then it goes all the way to two, it looks like. So from zero to two are all the X values these points have. So zero less than or equal to X, less than or equal to two. So why did I use less than or equal to both times? Because I have two closed circles at the ends. Will you always have closed circles at the ends? No, sometimes you'll have open circles. If you do have an open circle, then you just have to change that to a strict inequality without the little equals part on there. All right, now for the range. The range 
starts at zero and it goes up to one, two, three, four. So zero, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to four. And that's really it. That's all there is to it for line segments. All right, let's take a look at our next one. Okay, so for this one, we have, it looks like a horizontal line. And so let's think about our domain. What would that look like? I have arrow and arrow. This arrow means it keeps going this way to infinity. This arrow means it keeps going this way to infinity, all the way. So arrow all the way over from my x values, all the way over to arrow. What that means is all of these x values all the way to infinity are included. So what we just say is x is an element of, that's what that little sideways e means, is an element of the set of real numbers. For our range, we can't do that because for our range, the only y value this whole line has through the whole thing is zero, negative one, negative two, right? So it's only got one value for y the whole way through. So y equals negative two. And that's really all you can do for that one. All right, let's take a look at this one. Here we have a vertical line. Um, I'm gonna predict that these two guys will just kind of be switched a little bit. So let's see, domain. Start from the left, nothing, 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 and then boom, there's my line, right? So all of these points on this line all have the same x value of two. So x equals two for all, every single one of them. However, it is gonna go up and down to infinity in both directions, arrow to arrow. So my range this time is all y. It's an element of the set of real numbers. All right, so let's take a look at our next one. Our next one is a line. And so let's see what this one's gonna look like. Here we have a line that um, has a slope, okay? So let's take a look at our domain, okay? Well, we hit an arrow as we come in from the left. That means it's gonna go up and over, a little by little to infinity. All the way across, we're good, we're good, we're good, until we hit that other arrow. That arrow means it's gonna go down and over to the right to infinity. So you're gonna get them all. Every x value is going to have a point that's located on this line somewhere. So all x, element of the set of real numbers. What about the range? Well, if I start down here, I hit an arrow and it's gonna keep going down to infinity. Go up, all, everything's fine, everything's fine, until I hit another arrow. And it's gonna go up to infinity. So all y, element of the set of real numbers for that. So all lines that are not horizontal or vertical are gonna have these domain and ranges, every single one of them, except horizontal and vertical. All right, so moving on to a quadratic or a parabola. How's this one work? Let's take a look. This arrow is not going straight up ever. It's going up and to the left slightly, okay? This one is gonna go up and to the right slightly. It's gonna keep on going and going, but eventually it's gonna keep covering all of these x values here and all of these x values here. So my domain from arrow to arrow is all real numbers. X is an element of the set of real numbers. The range though is not gonna work that way. The range is gonna start at zero for my y's. And so you see there's no, there's no graph down here. It's just right here, isn't it? So since it's not down here at all, it can't be all real numbers. And students say that all the time. So it's got to start here at the origin, and it goes up. Okay, so since it starts at the origin and goes up, zero to infinity, right? Up. Well, how do you write that as an inequality from zero to infinity? Well, you might want to just say all y greater than or equal to zero. That will cover all of your y values all the way up, wouldn't they? Right, and then that's it, that's done. All right, let's take a look at our next ones. Okay, here we have a, another parabola, a quadratic, but sideways. Um, this is not a function, this is a relation. 
So this one, let's look at our domain. Our domain for this one, got nothing, nothing, nothing for X until you hit right there, the vertex. So from here forward, right? Because it's going to keep going this way and keep going this way. Down to the right, up and to the right. So my domain for this one starts at 2. So all X greater than or equal to 2 and keeps on going forward. And that's going to represent all those X values. The range, though, okay, like I said, it's going to keep going down a little bit to infinity. And then I go up, hit another arrow to infinity up, right? So now my range for this one is all Y element of the set of real numbers for that one. Okay. This one, unless you're in Algebra 2, you probably haven't encountered it too much, is a cubic function, but you don't need to know that right now. We just need to know the domain and range. All right, so starting from the left, we hit an arrow. It is going down and over to the left, little by little. So we're good, good, good arrow, good all the way through, no breaks, no holes, no open circles, all the way to arrow, and it goes up and to the right slightly. So that means my domain, all X, element, set of real numbers. Range, going down to infinity, right? Going up, don't worry about this right here and don't worry about that, those are distractions. We're only worried about the ends. So arrow, good, 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 all the way to arrow. And so that's going to be all Y is an element of the set of real numbers for that one. All right, let's take a look at a couple more. Okay, this one right here, this is what we call a square root function. And so how is this going to work for our domain and our range? Well, let's look at our domain. Nothing, 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 and then boom, right there. Right at the origin, you get your first X value. After that, they're going up slightly and to the right forever. Okay, so I'm thinking the domain would be all X greater than or equal to zero for that one. Can't have anything back here though, right? It's not back there. Range, okay, nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, well, there's your first Y value at the origin. So zero, it keeps going up. It never really flattens out. It keeps going up and over. So my range would be all Y greater than or equal to zero. All right, this one looks a lot like that one, except this one's been translated and transformed. And so let's look at how the transformation here affects the domain and range. Well, here's our first point right there. And so for my domain, okay, it's going to be, it looks like two for X, right? And then it keeps on going, doesn't it? Up and to the right, all X, greater than or equal to two, it looks like right there. Uh, what about my range? Okay, up, it looks like it stops at one, two, three. It starts at three and goes up, 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 up. Arrow means it keeps going up like this. So from three up would be Y greater than or equal to three for that one. All right, take a look at our next ones. Okay, here we have one that it looks like it is uh, been reflected. Let's see how that affects it. Here's our first point right there. Okay, domain, nothing, 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 nothing. And then right there at zero, it starts. And it keeps going over to the right and down. So all X greater than or equal to zero. Okay, what about the range? The range would be, well, I hit the arrow first, don't I? and it stops at zero. So how do I write that as an inequality? Well, it looks like it goes zero on down, zero or less, right? Zero or less. So Y less than or equal to zero is how we'd write the range on that one. Okay, here we have our next one. Looks like an absolute value function. Domain, arrow, all the way over. Good, 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 arrow. X element set of real numbers. Okay, range. Nothing, 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 zero. So it starts at zero and goes up, right, to infinity, 
like this and like this, that. So my range would be all y greater than or equal to zero, it looks like. All right. Got another absolute value function, this one. Uh, domain, arrow, all the way over, and arrow. Does it really matter that it's flipped down, it's been reflected? Not really. The domain is still all x's this way, all x's this way, because it goes down and over little by little. So my domain for this one, x, element, set of real numbers, range. Okay, um, looks like we get all the y values down, but down from where? It looks like two, right? So from two on down, you get all the y values. So all y less than or equal to two. It's looking like for that one. Um, let's take a look at this one. Okay, so here for this one, uh, we have domain arrow. Good, good, good. All the way to arrow. Okay, so these guys are going like this. So it's going to eventually cover all my x's. x elements of set of real numbers. Range. Uh, this one looks like it starts at the lowest point is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, right? So negative four on up, I get all these y values. So y greater than or equal to negative four, it looks like for that one. All right, let's take a look. Some more examples here. Okay, domain for this one, you might already now have the hang of it. Um, looks like arrow, good, good, good all the way to arrow, and it is gonna keep going down and over in both directions. So all x, element of real numbers, range. Well, the range starts at one, two, three, four, right there, and it goes down till I hit my arrows. So from four on down would be all y less than or equal to four. All right, this one's kind of weird because it doesn't really um, for the range, start any nice number. So let's, we'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, domain. Uh, looks like we got arrow to arrow, and they are going up and over slightly. So X, element, real numbers. The range, though, it looks like about maybe 1.8 maybe, and then it goes up. So maybe Y greater than or equal to, I would say just maybe 1.8 because it does say approximately, and many functions, actually, that's what happens. For these that have nice um, points right here, and right here, um, those have to be designed intentionally for it to do that. Most of the time, it's gonna look like this, where it's approximate. All right, so those two are done. Let's take a look at our next two. Okay, we got some circles. Domain for circles. Looks like it starts here and ends here. For our domains, let's see. Here, what is that? Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, all the way up to, we've got all those x values, all the way up to one. So, negative seven, let me do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep. Less than or equal to x, and then less than or equal to one is the end. Okay, like that. Range. Looks like it starts at negative three and goes all the way up to one, two, three, four, five. So from negative three to five for y, negative three less than or equal to y, less than or equal to five. That looks pretty good. Uh, for this one here, we have an ellipse. Same idea though. Looks like it starts here for x and then ends right here. So what would that be? One. Two, three, four, five, from one to five for x. So one less than or equal to x, less than or equal to five. Uh, let's see, for the range, looks like one, two, negative three, up to one, two, three, positive three, right? So negative three, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to three, looks pretty good. All right, and, couple more. 
This one, let's see, arrow for a domain, all the way over, good, good, good. All the way over to arrow. So, you guessed it, X is a real number. And then we got this one for our range right here, and our range would be arrow to arrow up here. So it's gonna keep going up and down. So it looks like we have all Y. Real number for that one. And then finally, um, we got one more line segment here. We'll take a look at that one. So for our line segment again, for some reason kids have a, students have a tougher time with this, but uh, it's just gonna be an inequality. Domain, looks like it's gonna go from zero to one, two, three, four. So zero, less than equal to X, less than equal to four. And my range would be, looks like zero to one, two, zero, less than equal to Y, less than equal to two. All right, guys, um, let me know if you have any other questions on this. Hopefully that was helpful. And if you do have some more questions, I uh, will make a follow-up video with some more examples and just let me know which type of examples that you wanna see. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Spread the word, and we will see you guys later. Miss you guys. Bye.